little exercise, of course, what I'm dealing with here are the discoveries of an interesting guy by the name of Ivan Panin. Ivan Panin was born in 1855 in Russia, got kicked out of Russia because he got entangled with a plot against the Tsar, he went to Germany, got an equivalent to a PhD there, then finally came to America, went to Harvard, got a PhD in mathematics at Harvard, and then an interesting thing happened, very bright guy, but an interesting thing happened, he became a Christian. He discovered Jesus Christ, and he discovered the Bible. But he also discovered that the Bible seems to be organized around sevens. And I don't mean just that there's sevens in the text. Seven bowls, seven trumpets, and all that business. There's plenty of those. There's over 600 examples of sevens in the text itself in terms of reading it. No, he discovered that that heptatic structure, the structure built around sevens, even gets inside the language. And he spent 50 years of his life tracking down these things. He left behind, when he finally died, 43,000 pages of small handwritten discoveries of sevens in the scripture. And I thought we'd go through each one of these this morning. But that would probably be uh, a, little, uh, a little rough. But he discovered, let me just mention one, that one of his discoveries that really it's easy to overlook. If you're wading through some of his stuff, it can, get, it can appear pretty tedious at times. But he discovered something rather interesting. He discovered that the vocabulary that's unique to Matthew is an exact multiple of seven. In other words, there are words in the New Testament, Greek, that occur only in the book of Matthew. There happens to be 42 of these. 42 words in the Greek that only occur in Matthew. Now, 42, of course, is 7 times 6. It's a multiple of 7 exactly. It also is interesting that the number of letters in those words is 126, which is also a multiple of 7 exactly. See, he's just fascinated that every place he looks, he sees it a multiple of seven. Not five, six, or eight. No, seven. Now, what makes this particular discovery strange is how was this organized? Let's assume you were Matthew, and let's assume that for some weird reason you decided you wanted the words that you only use. These words, the only thing that these words have in common is they're unique to the Gospel of Matthew. How, if you were Matthew, how would you organize that? How would you make it come out that way? Well, there's only two ways you could do that. One is you could get an agreement by all the other writers of the New Testament not to use these particular words. Or putting it another way, to have in front of you all the writings of the other guys, summarize their vocabularies, and then confine your attention to words that they haven't used to make sure you only use some multiple of seven. Either you got them all to agree, and that's absurd, because you know, or because some of them wrote after he died, I suspect. Or, you somehow, it proves that Matthew wrote his gospel last. The only way Matthew could organize this is if he had everything else in front of him, right? So this is a way of, you could say that, well, this peculiar property proves that Matthew's gospel was written last. Okay, the problem is, this is not only true of the gospel of Matthew, it's also true of the gospel of Mark. Not only was Matthew written last, Mark was written last. Whoops. Doesn't compute, does it? But it's not just Mark. The Gospel of Luke has a vocabulary unique to Luke that is an exact multiple of seven. The Gospel of John has a vocabulary unique to John that's an exact multiple of seven. James, Peter, Paul, Jude, each one of these were written last. <laughs> Let's go to Isaiah 53. 
That was Yaakov Ramsdell's first discovery. Here's the high point of the Old Testament. Of all the passages in the Old Testament that deals with the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, you've got Isaiah 53. Encrypted in that is Yeshua Shmi. Yeshua is my name. That's pretty impressive. Stand by. You have Yeshua is my name, his signature, Messiah, Nazarene, Galilee, Shiloh, Pharisee, Levites, both high priests, Caiaphas and Annas, Passover, the man Herod, wicked Caesar, perish. And that evil Roman city, let him be crucified, Moriah, cross, pierced from the atonement lamb, bread, wine, Obed, Jesse, David's line, of course, seed, water, Jonah, on it goes. Each of these having, you could preach a sermon about any one of these in its linkage to Isaiah 53. You say, that's pretty impressive? Stand by. Here's a list of the disciples. Disciples that mourn, Peter, Matthew, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, and two Jameses. Not one, two. There were two Jameses, right? Okay. And you've got Simon, Thaddeus, Matthias, three Marys, Salome, and Joseph. Now, it's interesting that one of these Marys and John and Yeshua are all linked together sharing the same yacht. Remember where Jesus looks down at John and consigns Mary? It's interesting, interesting. Obviously all by statistical accident. <laughs> Forty names in 15 sentences encrypted. They're clustered, relevant. It's the clustering, it's not just the names, the clustering and the relevance that is the profound aspect of this.